Hello, how are you doing? Welcome to another episode of the Roger That Podcast, the only podcast named Roger on the internet. I checked, I double checked, I triple checked. Hey, I just want to tell you about a couple of dates I have coming up, and thank you for listening. Um, tonight, I will be at, uh, <laughs> what the hell is the name of this place? Uh, Shakaraba. <laughs> Java in Tacoma, Washington. That's April 12th. April 13th. Uh, tomorrow I will be at the Bill's Place in Yakima, Washington. Uh, the following week on uh, April 17th, I will be at Vino, Vino Bella, a wine bar in Issaquah, Issaquah, Washington. The following day, uh, the April 18th, I will be in uh, at the Wild Horse Casino in Pendleton, Oregon. Uh, the following day after that, I will be at Jai Tai on Capitol Hill in Seattle, Washington. Uh, and uh, April 20th, 420, smoke 10 doobies and join me at the Hush Hush Comedy Club in Wenatchee, Washington. Uh, check all uh, dates on rogerlazola.com. All locations, all ticket information will be on there. So thank you for tuning in. Smoke 10 doobies, and I'll holla at you later. Peace. <laughs>
he recognized me from the show and he points at me. He's like, hey, man, you were great last night. My chinks are still sore. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I, I, I forgot who was on the Saturday, but they were all local guys. Right. So it was just local dudes doing the underground. And yeah, there's certain shows when you start out that you remember. You just remember them so clearly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember uh, Dwayne Goat going up in front of Peggy Platt, rest right. in peace. Um, for a benefit show, and yeah. I was just watching. It was like a Tuesday. It was packed in there. And Dwayne Gold fucking, he did all his Michael Jackson shit. I right. never seen that. Right. Like, I didn't yeah. know you could put music in the shit. Oh, like, yeah. He's doing all that. Fucking poor Peggy had to go yeah. back to that, dude. I was like, oh, she's just doing a regular act, and fucking this guy's dancing. And right. Because he does a great Michael Jackson impression. Yeah. Just one of those things. Like, so when when I started doing this, like, I wanted, when I came back, I wanted to get you guys, because I, I know the history of of Seattle, like, because I started here. So right. whenever anybody asked me, like, hey, where'd you start at? Or where are you from? I said, Seattle, comedy-wise. So I'm from the Bay Area originally, but comedy-wise, I'm from Seattle because that's right. where I started. So, like, take me through the scene because I know there was, like, an improv here, and you started in 1984 here, right? Yeah, so I can remember almost all the scene because I the, the it started right over up in Ballard up in, uh, it was called... I was I never went in there, but I know the Blue Note Tavern. Okay, in like 1979, and that was Carl and Lee McKay, yeah, and those guys, and uh, Ron Reed. There was some early from 79, and then I started in 84, so I can go back almost that far, and I've heard the stories from before that. But yeah, about 1990, the Seattle, the Comedy Underground was a full time Wednesday through Saturday, yeah, Wednesday through Sunday. The Last Laugh was downtown, okay. and the Improv was downtown, and then Giggles was in the U District. There were four full-time clubs, and they always did this thing where if you work one, you couldn't work the other, you'd get banned. And so I kept, I just, I would work one, the other three would ban me, then I'd make up to the club owner, and then he'd give me a date, and the other three would ban me. And then I did that for like three years. I never lost a date. All right, we're back. Uh, we had some technical difficulties. And uh, we're going to clean that up in post, as we say in the biz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, you were talking about... All right, three full-time clubs. Four full-time clubs. Four full-time clubs. Okay, so what do we got now? So we got Tacoma. We got uh, Parlor. We got Comedy on the Ground. We got Laugh. And they're only really a weekend clubs. I mean, if you get booked in there, you're only in there Friday or Saturday on yeah. any of them. Uh, Tacoma does Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, so... When you when you say a week, like in comic show business talk, a week was like, all right, I'm there from Wednesday, Wednesday through, through Sunday. Sunday, right? Okay, two on Friday, two on Saturday, It'd be five nights, seven shows. Yeah, yeah, that's how the week most of the weeks used to go. So you were okay. So 1984, that was in the middle of everything. Yeah, it was big and booming uh-huh. and hot, and comedy was new and. Okay, when you went on, so you were. Uh, people don't know your backstory. You like you're 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 a teacher. Right. Okay. Teaching fourth graders and uh, coaching high school track over in Pasco. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. A shout out to Pasco. I was just out there this yeah. weekend. Great shows. Uh, drank a little too much of uh, the booze. <laughs> and we're still trying to figure that out on a Wednesday right now. Fucking sweaty face <laughs> and fucking doing nothing but talking right now. Yeah. <laughs> we got to go to the gym after this. But anyways, so... Did you start in Pasco? No, no. I came over to the Comedy Underground because there was no comedy in Tri Cities, not okay. zero. And I was thinking, how am I? I want to, I want to, I want to try stand up. But you live in Pasco and teach in Pasco. You know, how am I going to make this work? Because mm-hmm. there was no comedy, there was nothing there. And at that time, you were, you were wearing a mustache. Yeah, man. No, I seen, seen the pictures. I seen yeah, the pictures. I got a porn star mustache. That shit was hype, dude. Yeah, you were man. on A and E on the Improv with that That's goddamn right. mustache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that my sh- history, man. That shit follows you around for the rest of your life, dude. I love, man. I love it, like, dude. Oh man, look at that. It's too funny. So I drove over here. I drove over to Seattle, and uh, well, I'll tell you the first part. I drove over in September of '83. Okay. And I signed up for an open mic. And I was nervous. I was scared. And it was almost my turn. I was about three away from going up. And Carl Warmanhoven was the MC that night. Okay. And I chickened out. <laughs> and I went up to Carl and I said, "Hey, look, I'm not going up." He goes, "Well, why not? You're going up." And about, I go, "I'm not going up." And I, I drove. I walked back out and got my car. Drove 200 miles back to Tri Cities. <laughs> and I and I hated myself for a year because yeah. I chickened out. I just got too scared. That sounds some man shit right there. And like, then I should have just did it. I should have done it, and I was pissed at myself. For, I was disappointed in myself for like a year, and then I said, okay, I got to do this. I'm, yeah. 
So I drove back over the same weekend, the following September, and I finally got up. And it was back then, people, it's hard to believe this, but on a Tuesday night at the Comedy Underground for an open mic, it was packed and it was hot. The audience was good. Yeah, yeah. And it was, and I went up and I killed for five minutes. Killed, like way better than I anticipated. They gave you five minutes back then? Five minutes. Those motherfuckers. And I, yeah. <laughs> now you got what, two or something? Yeah, two three? and a half. Two, light at two and a half. But, anyways. I, I and then I walked off stage and it w went better than I thought it was. I, w I couldn't have felt any better about it. And, and uh, uh, Laura Crocker, the late Laura Crocker, came up to me and said, That was great. We thought you were wonderful. Uh, we want you in the competition. And I went, what? And she said, you passed the audition. And I said, what? <laughs> she goes, you passed the audition. And I said, because it was my first time on stage. I didn't know nothing about yeah. comedy. Uh, and I said, well, isn't this open mic? And she said, yes, but it was also an audition for the Seattle Comedy Competition. And you passed the audition. <laughs> and I go, Okay. What does that mean? She goes, come back Tuesday night. They were just filling the last, like, three spots in okay. the competition. Oh, shit. That's wild. And so I said, okay, come back next Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. And I came back next Tuesday night. Now, it's the first night of the Seattle Comedy Competition. There's 20 professionals. Well, 19 professionals <laughs> and one guy going up for the second time. <laughs> and the previous Tuesday... You know, I must have looked great in this open mic compared yeah. to everybody else. Well, now I'm in with some fucking pros, and I did the exact same set, and I ate a big dick, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I just didn't know, because it killed the previous Tuesday, and yeah. I delivered the same material the way I, but now the audience sees the difference, right? Yeah. They're like, looking back, I figured this all out at the time. Okay. I was just confused. Like, yeah. why didn't that work? Well, obviously, I was going up for the second time. And the audience could see the difference between these guys they'd seen go up, and then this fucking nervous school teacher goes up for the second time and with his mustache, with his mustache, and <laughs> fucking eats it, and like I walk off like fuck. What okay, so how, how many days was the? Was it a whole week? Like yeah, this? it was Tuesday night, and, and, and the first three nights I commuted from the Tri Cities. Oh fuck, that's rough. I drove over after school on Tuesday. Uh huh. Did my set, and this is the other thing. I was brand new to comedy. I didn't know. <laughs> I could just leave after I was done. I waited for the show to end, and it was oh, 20 comics, right? Yeah. 20 back then, not 15, 20. So the show was two and a half hours long at least. Yeah. So it started at 8, get over at 10.30, and then I'm like, can I go now? <laughs> if I could have gone, if I'd have gone up third, I could have just left, right? I didn't know. I just stayed till the end of the show. And then I drove back to Pasco, slept about three hours, taught school, uh -huh. drove back to Seattle. I did that three nights in a row. So those kids were doing worksheets, is yeah, what you were saying? Yeah, uh, we watched some movies those days. So oh, put yeah. Put the fucking film on, and the teacher <laughs> sat in the back with his fucking eyes closed. Oh, you were back in the day when you had to roll the oh, shit yeah, in? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, put okay. the film in. I used to do that. I could I could cue that thing up. All right. Yep. I'm down. Get, All the, right. get the big reel out with the actual film and thread that camera, and then turn that thing on, and, <laughs> and then... <laughs> there, was a, there was two teachers that... I don't know who, uh, what their names were, but I, when I before I moved to Seattle, they used to come to this bar I worked at, right? And they would sit there on Sunday, football Sunday, and fucking get hammered <laughs> drunk, <laughs> hammered drunk, <laughs> fucking just sitting there because and then fools get paid once a month, right? So he, he was like, "Oh man, I gotta make it through next week, but I still want to drink." So they're just drinking pitchers of beer, taking shots, and then I was like, "Man, don't you have to teach school in the morning?" He's like, "Yeah, kids are gonna be doing a lot of worksheets this week." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but you know what? After that first week of competition, I was in that competition. I finished 18th out of 20. So okay. I, beat, I beat two people. Yeah, I don't beat know who two I people. beat. They must have been the other two people they were trying to fill. But just the fact that I was in the competition, I made, you know how it is in a competition. You make so many friends and contacts. Those Wait, who, was, who won in 84? Was uh, it, uh, it was Billy J. Be okay. All right. He won that year. But I made a lot of contacts and then. Just because I was in the competition, I had some credibility around town, you know. So okay, I could, I didn't, I really never did many open mics. I I would, lived in the Tri Cities, so I would come over on the weekend mm -hmm. because I was teaching school. But and the fact that I would tell them at the Comedy Underground, look, I drove over from Pasco. Oh, you were in the competition. We'll give you a guest set. So I could do like some five and six minute oh, guest sets okay. on the weekend. All right, and then I started going up to Spokane to an open mic. It was a little closer, right? Yeah, it's closer okay. than the end. So I drove up there on Sunday nights, and I did open mics, a handful of open mics. And, and, and I only did them about five, six months, and I started getting offers to do work. And, but I had been writing for like eight years. 
thinking I was going to go on stage. So I had stacks of notebooks. <laughs> but I just never... So when I first started, I was trying a lot of new material uh -huh. each time. So I got... Looking back, I got a lot of time real fast. Within about six or seven months, I was able to do 30 minutes. Oh, that's huge. Yeah. I yeah. Didn't know I'd be, but I had so <clears throat> much shit. You know, usually a lot of people, when they do comedy the first time, they got five minutes, and then they add a minute, and they add a minute, and they add a minute. All right. Here, I'm going to interrupt you. Yep. Okay, so you said your first time on there, you killed, and then your second time, you bombed. All right. This is my favorite thing in Seattle. So right. Peter Gray does it now, but he used to be Stu Stewart, has his comedy class. Right, right. So... Their first night was a Thursday. Yeah. Packed house from all their friends and family. Right. And uh, they all kill. Right. Everybody kills. Because the audience is sympathetic. Uh, and, oh, dude. Yeah. They come back on Monday, open mic with regular human beings, <laughs> civilians, and they fucking eat a dick. Yeah. It's the funniest shit. Just to see the reaction oh, in yeah. their face. Like, wait, this worked. Yeah. They're supposed to laugh right here. No, it's like a pilot, and all of a sudden his stick don't work anymore. He <laughs> he's like, I'm, I don't know how to fly this plane. This plane's out of control. Oh, rest in peace, Egyptian air or <laughs> Ethiopian air. <laughs> yeah. One of those crazy countries. Uh, yeah, dude, it's it's very interesting to me to to actually hear these stories from the people that actually did it because, you know, I, I came to Seattle 2003, mm -hmm. and I can remember just from then to there, I, I don't know if it was you or somebody... Well, well, let's just say it was allegedly you when you read <laughs> something on uh, the Northwest board. You're like, we need more mics in Capitol Hill. I don't want to drive to Renton. He's right. Like, no, that was me. I wrote that on there. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> He's like, this is when I decided to get off this board. Yeah. Because, <laughs> dude, I mean, there is so much time in this city right now. Oh, yeah. And they don't, they're too busy fidgeting and fussing with each other to take advantage of all the time. I mean, when I started... Portland didn't have a club that had an open mic. Right, like right. Harvey's no, didn't. No, Harvey's didn't do an open. Never has done an open mic. No, they just started doing it now. They sold it to the to the other person or yeah. whatever. But dude, these cats would drive up from Portland. Yeah, and sometimes absolutely. they wouldn't get up. Right. <laughs> like well, Carl was good thing. at it, but he was just like, yeah. No, some, I know. And you, well, you just said at the big, very beginning, you used to like to go watch the shows. Nobody watches the comics now. Don't watch the guys. They don't watch the headliners. I'm like. That's what I like to do too, and yeah. I, I still to this day like to watch comics. I yeah. like to watch the show because I like comedy and I like to watch the comics. Yeah, I'm interested in the show. I want to see who makes me laugh. But these guys now, I'm just sound like an old man. No, no, no. We both look. You know? I, I just turned forty. I'm, I'm right. on the tail end of it too. But <laughs> it's like, why wouldn't you watch these headliners? If you this learn. is what you want to do, and they may suck, and you may not like them, mm -hmm. but you learn something by watching guys that you yeah. like that hacky piece of shit. But it, it does work. Yeah. What's how's he doing that? You know, I was talking to uh, the manager of the underground like this week. The when I worked mm -hmm. there with Kristen, like he goes, no one hangs out anymore. It's unbelievable. He's, no, they all split. They all take off. No one hangs out. No, no one comes to the weekend shows. It watches. No, like I, I used to just go there just in case somebody didn't show up. Right. They would throw me a spot. I remember yeah. the first ten minute spot I ever got on a weekend was because the MC was late. Um, so they made me do the MC spot. I was just hanging out, drinking beers. Right. And the car goes like he starts moving his finger, like keep going. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't have fucking any more material. Right, exactly. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah. What did you that's expect a, me to do? That's a scary feeling too. <laughs> like, and they're uh -huh. standing in the back telling uh -huh. you to go long. You can't tell me to go long at the end. <laughs> you can tell me at the beginning. Does it? Uh, yeah, I used to bug Carl all the time. Yeah. I was there every fucking yeah. night. Uh, Car Carl, give me ten, give me fifteen minutes, bro. I gotta stretch my legs and right. fucking that's six minutes. But that's man. why you succeeded because you had that kind of drive and wanted to get better. The guy, like I said, yeah. those guys, they're like, I'm not driving to Renton for an open mind. Like, like what? What the, fuck? what the fuck are you talking I drove about? Over here from Pasco on the weekends <laughs> just to get five minutes because that was where I wanted. That's what I wanted to do. And if you yeah. don't, if you don't want it that bad, then shit, don't go up. No, it's fine. It's like. You know, we're not trying to sound like old dudes. They're like, oh, this is the way it was. And it's like, yo, but if you don't have no... Look, I just listened to Kevin Hart on um, Joe Rogan's podcast. Right. I don't think he's the funniest guy. Right. I thought, it, to be honest with you, I thought I'd get tired of looking at his stupid face. But he's... <laughs> right. Dude, he's so fucking, like, inspirational. That that guy on that level is still trying to create things and... Yeah, and, and work hard. Work business. And he has this thing called... Um, uh, 
financial fitness where he's trying to teach people in the inner city how to manage their money. Like, yeah. debt isn't, you know, he's starting a supplement. Com- like, he's trying to make things better. He's, like, a, such a positive person. Yeah, well, he goes into every place where he goes. He does road runs and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Sets up road runs. And then he gets in the race and he runs these 10Ks with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. He's all, I did that just so people can see you don't have to be, like, in the best shape. You can just run if right. you want to. Right. So he's all, so I got in with Nike and I told him, let's do this thing. And we'll fucking, you make money and I'll meet people. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah. Anyway. It's hustling at a, def, at a higher level. It's like, I, I get it. It's a little bit easier to get out there because of the fact that we have the internet. Like, right. Like, I, I'm, I'm very glad that I didn't start, com- I started comedy in my 20s, but I'm very glad that they didn't have Facebook oh, and Twitter. Yeah. Because I'm a shithead and I'll fist fight you. <laughs> like, like, yeah, no, that's what I want to say. <laughs> we used to talk like this to my face, asshole. Yeah, see what happens? Like we used to hang out at the underground, and then it would be—it's downstairs. So after the show, I uh, we'd be like, "Hey, come up and hang out with the comics. You fucking have some drinks." Right. And people would get sometimes you get your dick sucked. And right. Then, yeah, yeah, it was a good hang yeah, on a Tuesday. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> you going right. to you going to work hungover? And you're like, "Hey, somebody sucked my dick last night after the show." <laughs> like, what the fuck? What show? <laughs> So yeah. it's it's just one of those things that are like I don't know. It's com- no, it's completely different. I was telling a friend of mine about uh how we used to get work. He asked me, "How'd you used to get work?" And you know, you had to pay somebody literally like $50 to bring their camera down and set it up. And Rest in peace, Lex Cooper. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Lex Cooper would be an example and he set up the cam camera, shoot it, you get that VH hope the Hope the set was good. Yeah, because you just paid a guy fifty bucks. Because if you went up there and ate a dick, you're like, well, fuck, well, I gotta wait for it. another. I gotta shoot another one for fifty <laughs> bucks. And then you went to a place in Ballard, and got copies of these tapes. Okay. And, and then you'd have like twenty of them. And then you took them and you got a letter and you put them in an envelope and you mailed them out. And that's how you, and then start following up with phone calls. And the guy said, shit. If it was that hard now, I bet a whole bunch of these guys wouldn't be doing comedy. I oh, yeah, no, because guar- they just shoot it with their phone and then hit send. Yeah, I guarantee you. No, if it was that much work, I mean, you had to spend some money too because you had to pay the guy and then you had to go get the copies. So you had to invest some of your own capital to hope to get a gig. So. I, I remember printing head shops off yeah, at a place yeah. in downtown yeah. Seattle somewhere, yep. and they were six dollars a headshot. Yeah. And I would send my fucking little headshot out with my little VHS. Yep, exactly. And then I got a I got a camera with the little tapes. Yeah. I thought oh, I was the, oh dude yeah. I thought I was the shit. I saved yeah. up. I saved up. I was like oh this thing's one hundred ninety dollars. I was like ooh I could get it. Went to the fucking uh, the Best Buy. Yep. Bought the joint. I was like yeah didn't even have a computer. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so yeah it's it yeah remember you had you had to have a, a stack of headshots. Yeah no you got there was a place in Missouri you could get them for like a hundred. Or five hundred. I don't remember. Those are floating around. Some of those with mustaches are still. You I see, I, see like, I oh, stole man. a lot. I stole a lot. Allegedly, I stole a lot yeah. of headshots, old headshots from the comedy underground. Oh, that's cool. Because they brought all the stuff over and they didn't fucking file anything. Right. They just, dude. You should, if you Stacking went in, the, if you went in the fucking green room right now, you'd be like, ugh, what the fuck, man. I don't even want to yeah. sit on these. I was like, Fox. I was like, well, what's up with it? Because Fox was there on Sunday. Right. Uh, this is John Fox. Uh, he, he was there on Sunday. And I was like, yo, what the fuck? The maid off or what? Yeah. So I'm never here. I was like, well, fuck, get somebody to clean this fucking place up, man. There's not even no towels in the goddamn. Right. <laughs> Shit, man. Yeah. Just busting his balls. He paid me, though. I like that. I like listening to you bust his balls. It's fun to listen to. I've heard you do it, too. Dude, it's my favorite because it. I love Fox, like in person, right? But via email, he's a shithead, right? I fucking do not like him. Yeah, <laughs> I know guys like that, and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. In person, it, you're cordial via, yeah. It's just, you know, I love the guy. Like, if people don't understand, like, if you started in Seattle, the only way to move up was doing the comedy competition. Right, exactly. There was no, there was no way around it. There was really, there was very little television unless you were in New York or L.A. Right. Um, nobody came through here. I mean, they're doing the NBC looking for brown people at the parlor in May, which... Is I'll, that the name of it? Well, that's what I call it. <laughs> yeah, that's what they I have call it different. <laughs> the they, uh, it was NBC standing for diversity, and then everybody's like, what oh, about yeah. the white people? They're like, yeah. oh, shit, now we got to call it tips. I don't even know what yeah, it yeah. smells. No, <laughs> so, <exactly. laughs> but they, I mean, they're coming through Seattle this year. I did it last year in Nashville, or no, Houston, ate a dick. Right. I don't just don't know how to do those fucking 90-second... 
Oh, man. Yeah, 90 seconds. Hard. 90 seconds during the day in front of a bunch of people that want you to fail? Yeah. <laughs> like, no. they, they don't not, they're not going to laugh at no. you. They're, they're not like, nah, I ain't going to fucking laugh at this guy. No, that's rough. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, the competition used to be the way you got established in Seattle. That's the way you had to do it. So you never won? What, what happened? No, I took uh, 84. It was the first time. 85, I didn't make it. 86, I made the semifinals. Okay. And then 87, I made the final, and that was in uh, the uh, uh, Paramount Theater. And back then, there was one finals night. Mm -hmm. They didn't have five. You just had one finals night. So I made the finals for the first time, and I drew f I drew first. So I had to go up first. Oh. oh, I'm fucked. And that was the night <clears throat> I thought I won it. I thought that night, fuck, I won from the... I had the best set of the night. I mm -hmm. killed. And then at the end of the night... In fourth, Brad Upton, the fuck uh, plays, boop. I was like, shit, fourth. Are you fuck? But that's what happens when you go up first, man. Yeah. So the next year, I came back. I'm, I'm going to win this fucker next year. And I came back and fucking blasted through to the finals. Drew number one again. I'm like, son of a bitch. And I took second that year to Steve Stitch, who had a guitar. I'm like, he's going up after the break with the guitar. And I oh, went up first. I'm a, fucked. What a dick. So I went, I'm done with it. So I took fourth and second the two years I made the finals. Okay. And that was 87, 88. I, I kind of have a similar story from 2009. Mm -hmm. uh, I made the finals the first time I made the finals. I made the finals in San Francisco that year. Right. And then the finals in Seattle. So... I did it in the same year. Like, I wanted to do the David Crow. Right. Win both. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so that was the plan. It didn't work out in San Francisco, but I was just kind of happy to be there. Mm -hmm. Like, it was one of them things where it was a little overwhelming at that point. So 2009. So I, I draw first at the Admiral. Mm -hmm. Admiral Theater. Beautiful theater. I draw first. Great set. I have a great set. Wasn't the best set of the night. Fucking guy by the name of Jose Sardui. Yeah, yeah. Like, I we're downstairs, mm -hmm. and the fucking building is shaking, bro. Like, I'm literally there. We're, we're kind of just, everybody's just kind of on their phone, and then everybody's like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Up there? It's just one of those things that we go and walk up there. This guy is murdering the whole fucking room, dude. Right. So, David Crow's MCing that night, by the way. Uh, so, I, uh, he went up like 34th. I went up first. I took the bullet. Then uh, they start calling out names. Fourth place, Jose Sardui. He said, boo, what yeah, the yeah. fuck, boo, boo. I think it was Paul Hooper, Sean Kent. And then I'm like, I looked at Peter, and he's like, yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, I won? Yeah. That was the first night I won in, yeah. in, in any round. I go up, boo, yeah, boo, yeah, boo. Yeah. So usually you take your pictures up <laughs> right. on stage, and fucking Peter's like, yeah, let's get in the back in the room. <laughs> we'll take some pictures there. Yeah. So I didn't even get my picture with the wow. host on stage because everybody was booing me. But Peter had a theory, because uh, it's a Navy town. Right. He's Air Force. Oh. So he had a kind of a theory. And then he's a good, real good-looking cat. Right. So maybe the judges were like, fuck this pretty motherfucker. Yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the theory. Yeah, I made, I did a competition in 2005. I was seventh. 2007, I was sixth. But in the, the last night, I was I was fifth mm -hmm. going into the seventh. Oh. Uh, Andy Haynes, who was sitting in eleventh, won the night. I finished third or second. Right. And I was like, "Cool, I, I'm good. Right. I'm good." Fifth place, Andy Haynes, and they start going through. I was like, "What the fuck?" Oh. There's a picture of Peter like doing the, doing the, uh, the scores. Right. And then him looking at the scores, and then him going, oh, like with wow. his face, like his mouth open. Andy jumped me from eleventh wow. to fifth and dropped me to sixth. And then, like you can't, you couldn't do it like every two years. So it was like that 2009. Hurts, yeah, yeah that was rough, that's, dude. That hurts. Yeah. And then that night, I had a, I had a wisdom tooth issue. The same night. That same night, Shit. I was like Jordan coming out in fucking game six yeah. with the flu, bro. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I knew I had to kill it, and I yep. did what I was supposed to do, and just like, uh, Ron's like, put aspirin on it. You, yeah. I was like, got me through the next day, dude. I fucking call my mom. Take me to the dentist. Yeah. 25 year old man. Fucking, Mom, <laughs> take me to the dentist. Yeah. Like a little girl. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. So how do you how do you see yourself like fitting in the scene like right now? Oh, nobody knows. I mean, I don't really work around here much anymore. It's yeah. weird. It's weird. Yeah. Because I went and did an open mic about three weeks ago. And they just I look you up and down. I hadn't done an open mic literally in in 30 years. Uh-huh. 30 years. Because I have to write some new shit. All my stuff went viral, right? Okay, so we'll like, get to that, Holy yeah. crap, I got to write some new stuff and work it out a little bit. 
But yeah, whole bunch of these open micers like, who's this fucking old guy? Who's this old guy? Is he just and, but, trying this? But uh, um, they let me have what time I want. They go, you want to do 10 minutes? Do 10 minutes. All right. I'll yeah. do my 10 minutes. So I took my 10 minutes. But yeah, a whole bunch of guys, n- none of them know who I am or what I've done or oh. anything. They just think, oh, this fucking guy's retired. Now he's going to try comedy. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what they're looking at me like. I do that every once in a while. Like I go open mic. I mean, yeah. Like, uh, can I go up set 10th? Like around here, I could right, do that. Right. But in LA, you're like, fuck you. Draw, yeah. draw a number like the rest of you. Yeah. But yeah, it's just funny to like, because every time I come back, what, twice a year? There's, but yeah, they don't know the scene. They don't know who's headlines from this town. They don't know anything about the guys that live here. They don't know Kermit or Crow or any of these guys. No. They don't know who they are or what they've done or what kind of money they make or anything. They think their whole world just revolves around. The 30 people they keep seeing at the open mics. But yeah. There's hundreds of them, but, you know, that's their whole circle. <laughs> and they're always fighting. Like, you're never going to fight with fucking Kermit Appeal. No, or, like, no, you know what I'm it's saying? It's unbelievable, like, the shit that goes on. Because we saw each other, like you said, face to face. Yeah. It's like, you want to fu- say something <laughs> to me? You got a problem with me? Yeah. Then I, you remember, let's talk uh, about this. You remember Blaine Reader? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I remember one time, Jubal, uh, he had me on the show in the morning, and we were playing this game about being roommates or whatever. And I had to, there was like the, the uh, what was that, the honey, what's that stupid newlywed game? You're all right. Where mm-hmm. you had to know your roommate or whatever. So one, it was, uh, you know, what makes Jubal sad? I was like, I don't know. Fucking name. He goes, when Blaine Reader features at the underground before me. <laughs> 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 so that night we're at the underground right. and fucking Blaine comes up to us. Hey, you guys have a problem with me? Like immediately. <laughs> right. I, I was like, I respect you for that. I was like, yeah, nah, we're just fucking around, man. Right. I'm just fucking. So, you know, it's always this passive aggressive comments on the Facebook, all this shit. Yeah. I'm like, come on, doggy. Just relax. Well, that's the other thing, too, is uh, all these people get their feelings hurt. I'm like, comics bust each other's balls in the meanest fucking face to face. All day. All day. But you do it online and they all get their feelings hurt and they fucking. I, I need a safe space. I was like, what, what the fuck? Safe space? What? I don't get it. Kevin Hart was talking about that, the trashings he took at the comedy cellar with all those guys. Oh, yeah. He was there like Patricio Neal. He was saying, he's all, Patricio Neal would just come up to me and go, ugh, I hate the way you talk. It makes me want to punch you in your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to take ball busting to another level, man, and appreciate when you get when you get hit. That was my favorite shit, like when I would MC at the club. And the headliner would come up and kind of bust my shit, right? And make fun of what I did, right? That was the best part. Yeah, exactly. Kathy Sorbo used to go up and shake your hand and then be in your ear and go, "Pretend I said something really funny." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Kathy Sorbo. All right, we did it again. All right, so we're at full power at this point. All right. <laughs> I just uh, uh, never mind. I'm gonna fix all this bullshit in post. Um, so. Uh, we were talking about younger people, whatever. We don't want to just be like shitting on younger people, all right? We get it that you guys are a lot sensitive more than us or whatever. Right. That you guys wear helmets and shit when you ride bicycles. <laughs> but, I mean, <laughs> cool out. It's not that serious. That's right. I was to people, I was like, oh, we need to have any advice on show business. I was like, just remember, show business doesn't need you. That's right. It doesn't want you. No. Fucking, it's trying to make you quit constantly at it, all times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, just if you really want to do it, you got to be fucking about the hustle and actually love it. Yep, yeah, absolutely. It'll break your heart real fast. Oh, definitely, it breaks your heart on a daily basis. Once that okay, let me ask you: when you did, if you ever auditioned for something and didn't get it, what was the time that it hurt the most? Because I remember mine. Ooh, that's a good question. Uh Man, that's a good question. I got a, I did a show, I did a pilot for the History Channel where I was going to host a show on the History Channel. Okay. To, they flew me to New York City and we shot a pilot and I, I knocked it out of the park. Like, yeah. I'm like, I, I, afterwards, I thought, fuck, I was pretty good on that. Yeah. I was the host of a, a show on the, and then they, oh, we really liked it, everything. They put it together. I, I still have a copy of it, and uh, but A&E went, no, nah, we're not going to pick it up. I'm like, fuck. That would have been a game changer right there. Oh, man. dude. A&E just passed on it. You know, they made this pilot, and then A&E passed on it. And I was like, oh, shit, this is going to change everything. I'm going to be on A&E every fucking night. Yeah. And my whole, everything I can charge, my... my Everything goes, yeah. Everything's going to go through the roof. And I was like, damn it. All right, I'll, I'll tell you mine, and then I want to yeah. ask you another question. Uh, 
So they had last comic standing here, mm-hmm. um, maybe two years ago, three years ago. It might, anyways, it was at the parlor in the downtown location. Right. Um, they had two shows. It was an early show on a Sunday, seven o'clock and the nine thirty, and uh, I fucking killed, like hard. Right. Like I, I'm very humble with it. I was like, yeah, I did all right. Fucking right. But I went outside. That I got like half a standing ovation. Fucking, I've never killed that hard in three minutes. Mm-hmm. Like I had to stop telling jokes because everybody was laughing. I didn't want to step on the laughs. I was yep. killing that hard. Right. And you only got three minutes. I never killed that fucking hard in three minutes. And pff, I was like, I went outside. They're like, how'd it go? I was like, can't do any better. Yep. And then so I'm having dinner with my folks. And uh, the next day, you know, and people start posting on Facebook about fucking. I was like, oh, they're calling people already? I thought they were going to take a day or two or whatever. I didn't get it. I was like, and I ta- I was, forgot who I was talking to. I was like, I was sad for like a day. Yeah. I was like, what a fucking else do I have to do? What? But you know what I've told people? I've been, I've told, it's like getting jerked off and they pull your, they pull their hand away right, right before you're about to come. <laughs> and I mean, I, that's happened so many times. Yeah. In deals and show business and gigs and TV things. I've just like, yeah, you can't. Yeah. I don't, until I'm see, until it's happening, I don't, I'm assuming it's not happening. Do you think that's with everybody in show business? It happened it? to me this year on America's Got Talent. Oh, fuck. It was a done deal. Everybody, yeah. according to them, I'm on the show. I don't have to audition. I'm straight through to the rounds, everything. It's a done deal. Yeah. It's, don't worry about it. We'll call you in March. I'm like, oh, shit. It's, all right. All right. Uh-huh. They call me in March. Yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> fuck. Whatever. We, we went with a, a really young guy that dresses like yeah. a unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't care. I mean, I, it's just like. This been happened so many times. I'll okay, like, yeah. you, all right. You talk about like game changers, like in comedy and just like living situation wise. But you've been making a, a decent living, you know, doing comedy over the years. When did you stop? When did you stop teaching? Uh, 1986. So I've been doing it ever since. Okay, since 1986. You still coach though? I coach high school kids. And, okay, yeah, that don't pay much. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. So yeah. I tell them, it's a. Uh, I tell them when I coach high school kids that uh, look, if I got a good gig. I'm missing the meat that week. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not, I turn down some gigs once in a while, like, yeah. oh, because that's a big weekend where the big invitational, I want to be there. I'll turn okay. it down. But if Johnny Mathis wants me to open for him that weekend, then yeah. I'm not going to the meet. I'm skipping the meet. Yeah, and exactly. And the guy that hired me, the track coach, he said, I'll take you whatever I can get you. So that's fine with me. I oh, go, that's okay. dope, man. So I do that, you know, every March, April, May. So if you guys don't f- f- know this, uh, Brad is a, a world class hurdler. Was. No. <laughs> no, you could. St- I see in this video. I you can, can still, still get over. over. Yeah, I can still go over some hurdles. I'll go over them if it's warm outside. I'll warm up. Show yeah. the kids. It's funny. The kids go. You, you're pretty good. I go pretty good. Pretty good. You want to look like this? Yep. Should have seen me in my prime. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if I could still explode, I'd show you something. All right. So that 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 was one of the jokes that I remember from you as well. Is uh, uh, pulling the muscle is only innate to. It. To yeah. human beings, yeah. you never see a bird go ah. Pull a wing, <laughs> yeah. Pull a wing. Or a cat tear a hamstring. Ugh. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember all these jokes, man. Yeah. Like I remember all the jokes that everybody. Because I watched so much comedy when I was here. Right. This is what you, I had no friends right. when I moved here. Yeah. So I was just hanging out. What with brought the you up here? How 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 did you come up to Seattle? Oh, my folks moved. Uh, well, my mom. And my little brother, sister's dad, mm-hmm. and all my whole family just moved here because it was getting starting to get a little outrageous price wise Bay Area. Yeah, yeah. So it was, this is like end of the '90s, so the tech boom was still going on. Right. So you know, up here, I mean, early late two thousand, late '90s, early two thousands, its cost of living was fucking yeah, and less than no, the Bay Area. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no mm-hmm. state tax, so they moved up here. Then I stayed down in California, and then I got into a little bit of trouble with the law. Yeah. And then uh so I had to take care of that before I came up there. So that was like 98, 99 they moved up here. And then so I've always wanted to live in the city. Yeah. So Seattle's cool. I was like I knew I knew a bunch of people that I went to high school with that were that were, that moved to Seattle. Like that was a whole thing. Like yeah, at the yeah. end of the 90s they were like everybody's moving to Seattle. It's like, "Oh, what for?" Right. Like, fucking But my little brother and sister's dad grew up uh over here in Rainier Beach. Oh, okay. So, yeah, he was in the army. Uh and that's where they met. Okay. Yeah. So then, uh, so they moved up here, and uh, we had a spot, uh, Duncan Avenue South, Rainier Beach, mm-hmm. and then 
they had to move out of there, and then we moved. My mom moved to Kent, so that was my first spot in Seattle. Yeah, Kent. Yeah, Kent. Yeah, oh, Kent's rough. Yeah, man. <laughs> so, but I eventually like uh, Jubal. I moved with Jubal. We got a spot on Lake Union. Yeah, on Lake Union. So this is 2004, 2005. Um, two bedroom, hardwood floors, overlooking fucking Lake Union. Nice. Back in 2005, 2005, fucking 850. Wow. <laughs> wow. 850, bro. Wow. And he was paying the extra 50 bucks because he had the bigger room. Yeah. He had the parking spot or something. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> 850, dude. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, it's probably 3,500, four grand right I'll now. I'll bet it is. Yeah. Yep. That's prime spot right off Dexter. Yep. So there was the Swedish Cultural Center mm -hmm. right there. And then my stumble home bar was the Dexter and Hayes. Oh, yeah. Which is now a weed shop, which made me sad. <laughs> <laughs> we used to, oh, dude, that was, oh, dude, that place. I remember me and Jubal, we got in a fist fight at the yeah. Niners Seahawks <laughs> game. <laughs> Long story short, like the, uh, I was at the JM playing poker after the game, which was a fucking bad idea. But that this is when the poker boom was going on, right? And so they had Sunday night poker, which is a bad idea. Fucking after a Seahawks game, yeah. everybody's hammered drunk. And Jubal had snuck two bottles of black velvet, and it wasn't. It was like a little bit bigger than a pint. I don't know if it was a whole fifth, but it was in plastic bottles, right? And he sh put them in his shoes. And we're fucking slugging back black velvet whiskey uh. in the in the bathroom, and dude, just it was a shit show after the thing. Uh, this guy, I was talking shit to him, and then fucking he lunged at me. I go back, I slip, I throw a punch, I slip because there's beer everywhere. Right. So everybody breaks it up. I get, I go to the underground. Uh, Jubal's trying to mack one of the waitresses. I was like, this fool did this, blah, blah. And he just looks at me with a straight face and goes, let's go back. Yo, I was like, yo, that right? this sounds like a fucking fantastic idea yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I'll get all pumped up. Yeah, fuck it. So we go. We go, and uh, this fool, he's getting right in front of the J&M Cafe getting a hot dog. All right? And uh, spotty. I yeah. spot him. I was like, oh, there he is right there. So I roll up. I was like, what's up, fool? Are you talking all that shit? Or let's get in the fucking alley. Get it on. And he looks at me, and he goes, all right. I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck, man. <laughs> like, and, dude. Oh, I'm going to have to back it up now. Yeah, that particular day, it was a brick cold. Brick cold. Yeah. Like, it was, like, in the teens. We actually left the game early because, like, a dummy, I wore Converse. Right. And there's no insulation. No. My feet were fucking frozen. So we ended yeah. up watching the rest of it at Sluggers. But, so, this, I'm taking, I, I'm taking off. I look like Kenny from South Park with all my stuff on, just taking it off. So he has a homeboy with him in the alley. Right. I I have Jubal, and he's all Jubal's like, "What do you want me to do?" I was like, "Well, if you start beating the fuck out of me, jump in." But yeah, it's fair fight one on one. This fool, we we start going at it. He pops me, pop pop. I get him back, pop pop. Then <laughs> I try to rush him, and just boom, fucking knees me in the face. I'm out. Yeah, for like a second and a half, and I just wake up. He's on top of me. He's like. You want some more? I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm yeah. good you want. Yeah. So when they're leaving, they're still talking shit, and this fool just fucking bink socks Jubal in the face and fucking runs oh. away, dude. Oh. So we go, we can't, we're like, oh fuck, that sucked. Yeah. <laughs> so we go to uh we go to uh we go to the house and kind of wash up. My shit's all busted. He has a fucking kind of black guy coming. So we walk into Dexter and Hayes. There was this chick that worked there, Danae. I remember mm -hmm. her name. She's from Montana. And she goes, she just looks at us and goes, the fuck happened to you guys? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, it's a long story. Can we get some beer and some shots? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that was a rough one, dude. Yeah. We had to take that loss on that that's night. A, that's a good story. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. It's a lot longer. Yeah. Like, fuck, but, dude. The condensed version, like if you, it's just like, why you, why'd you go back? It's, it, it's unnecessary. Because uh, we've been drinking, it seemed like a good idea. Seemed like a yep. good idea. Damn. Yep. yep. <laughs> seemed like the right thing to do. Right call. Sure. Why not? All right. So, I, I'm very happy that you agreed to do this because you're um, you're like a viral sensation now. Um, it's been weird. It's kind of strange, right? Like, I'm not gonna say like you're old dude, but you're like older. Right. To the fact to you're like shit. I don't know what this viral's going going to do my career. How, what it. Are you your price going up? Is that what's yeah? Going? My price gone up. I got a lot more work out of it. A lot yeah. of corporate events. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
it, it was weird because 2018 was the first year out of all my whole career I went, I'm not going to work as much. I'm just not going yeah. to quit taking some of this shit gig and stay home on the weekend. I'm just not fucking doing it. I, I'm okay money-wise. I'm all right. And uh, so when these videos went viral, I got all these offers. I'm like, yeah, I'm open that night. I'm open that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's been a cash grab is what I've been doing. I've been okay. going out doing a cash grab. It's been great. And uh, I've got some, I've got, listen, I got six nights booked in 2020. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 2020. I booked, a, I booked a gig like 15 months in advance. <laughs> like, I don't have a calendar there. Are you open on this date? Not, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm open. Yeah. Yeah, I'm open. I mean, I've got some dates and like theater dates and corporate dates booked in 2020. Damn. That never happened in my life. Yeah. Can we, can we get you the following year? Yeah, sure. I'm open. I know I'm open. <laughs> He's kind of laughing like, yeah, sure. I'm like, yeah, okay. Why not? And a couple of times, like on certain dates, they asked, like on a couple of these track meets, I didn't want to do the track meet, so I just jacked my price up. Uh-huh. Thinking they're going to say no. And they go, okay. I'm like, well, fuck, okay. All uh, right. At that price, let's do it. I don't know if it was you or Kermit, but it was it was something about corporate or private gigs. They're like... No, they want a thousand dollar show. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. They don't want a two hundred dollar comedian. Nope. nope. Yeah. So I tell these cats, they are, oh, I got a private gig. I was like, first of all, you shouldn't be doing a private gig, by the way, for your fucking experience. Right. And second of all, how much did you ask for? Oh, three hundred bucks. I was like, no, no, ask no. Ask for a lot. Ask for a lot. They might meet you in the middle, or I've they had, might give you what you want. I've had a. I asked for a stupid price for a gig recently, and they didn't bat an eye. <laughs> It's like, fuck, how much money did I leave on the table? <laughs> Holy shit. How much more can I ask for? Yeah, I know. It's like, this is crazy. <laughs> and then at that price, you think, fuck, I hope I'm good. Yeah, right? Yeah, I'm like, shit. Because, oh, shit, now they're going to want me to be good at that price. <laughs> I'm like, holy crap. Uh, but, I mean, you do a lot. That's, uh, I hate to say that's a big majority of your income is whatever, the oh, private yeah. and corporate, but... You know, it is. I don't right? hardly do any club dates anymore because they just can't pay what I'm getting. You know, as far as corporate events, I, I do about six cruise ships a year. Mm -hmm. That's a good gig. The money's good. It's a week, but yeah, it's an easy week. But you, I mean, yeah, they pay for your travel, and you know, you do two nights out of seven, and yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those viral. It's so weird because. That stuff that went viral, it's the same shit I've been doing for years. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Same jokes. Yeah. I'm like, all of a sudden, that thing went crazy. Well, yeah. How many views did it get? Uh, when it went out, when it got posted, it got 12 million in, in 48 hours. Motherfucker. And it had 33 million in 10 days. And it's still there. It's got 72, 73 million out there. It's, it's the most viewed stand-up video ever. That's what they told me. Ever. Ever. That's wild, dude. I'm like, holy shit. And then they posted one like a week later because that one went crazy, and that one's got 40 million. Yeah. So the two of them together got 112, 113 million views. Just those two. Yeah. And there's others out there now that are floating around. Fuck, that's wild. But for the first time in my life, the weird thing is people know my material. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit, I've never had to do this before. They all come in because they saw this bit and then you do the bit for them and it doesn't get, it doesn't hit like it used to and you're like, shit. Yeah. Ouch. I just did two of your bits on this shit, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I was like, holy, so I dropped that, all that stuff that I, that went viral, I quit doing it. Yeah. Because it's like, it's, it's good stuff, obviously, because it went crazy and everybody liked it, but they've seen it. Mm -hmm. It's weird. And it's I've not never like because normally for thirty two years, thirty four years, when I walk out on stage, I'm fairly anonymous. Everybody's sitting there like, I don't know who this guy is, and I have to prove myself every night. We all have to do that as yeah. a comic. We have to prove ourselves every night. Yeah. Well, now this group of people that come see me, have, they're all excited about it because it's me. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit, this is weird. And they like me already, but they've heard the material. And I'm like, oh, shit, I got to dump all this. I got to write some new stuff. Yeah, right. I've been, I've been getting away with being anonymous every night on stage. And now I'm like, oh, shit. The Northwest will do that to you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean in the corner of the corporates or the cruise ships or oh, you know, these audience, these people don't know me. Mm -hmm. For the most part, they're not familiar with me. Yeah. But now it's like, oh, crap. Now I got to write some new stuff, which I which is good because I sat down and I sit down and do it. I can. But I was getting lazy. Oh yeah, we all do. Yeah, yeah. If the material's working, why are you gonna fuck with it? I can't. I I was gonna go to open microphone tonight, but uh, 
I just, I'm fucking, I, I'm still hungover. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy you lunch right after this. You need lunch? No. You sure? I don't know. I need lunch. You need lunch? Yeah, I'll buy you lunch. You know what sounds good? What? Pho. Pho. Oh, yeah, that's good hangover food. I'll, you got a pho player around here? No, we can find one. All right. All right. That I'll sounds take good. it. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> that's good hangover food. Yeah. That was a, like two days ago. Like I was getting to the point where I'm like, motherfucker. I'm, I'm on the tail end of my career. I got to hang the jersey up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's the other thing you know about these viral videos is all these young comics start telling me, this is what you need to do. You got all these exposures. You need to build it into this and this and this. I go, fuck, I'm 62. There's no 10-year plan. <laughs> There's no fucking 10-year plan. I don't give a shit. Yeah. This I is just a nice, I said it's a nice uh, 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 reward, a nice validation at the yeah. end of a long career because it's like, I'm ready to get on that horse and ride it off into the sunset. Okay, I I shouldn't even talk about this, but it it it, it didn't bother me. It was just kind of like it, it made me. I don't know. There's a comic we know, and uh, he wants something really big. Night Show wanted some stuff. Yeah. Steven, and then he was just like talking about, well, you know, and then I'm gonna have to move that leg, and this and that. I was like. It's, this is a problem we all want to have. Right, exactly. <laughs> like what? I I just didn't get, and, and I I'm not I'm not saying anything bad about it. It's just like I just didn't get why you continue to do the try to get these things, and then when you somebody say, hey, let's right. do it, that you don't really yeah, you're trying to talk yourself out of it. Well, I always thought you know if something like this happened to me when I was forty, mm -hmm. that would have been great. I yeah, could have really capitalized on it. But really, the reality of it is, what am I going to do at sixty-two years of age? As yeah, as far as a, a career or down the road ten years from now, shit, there's no down. 10 well, years I mean, what are you going to do? Pick up a residency in Vegas or something? Yeah. Like, I mean, do you really want to do that? Yeah, I mean, so, you're rooted here. Where exactly. You live. Uh, yeah. I don't I'm know. Not, it's a good problem to have too. Like. It's, you know, but I never moved to L.A. I've been here my entire life. I've been based in Seattle my entire career. Your mustache is still there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's still that'll be around forever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, I love that picture. I I have a I have an old headshot of Ron Reed looking at a Rolling Stone. From oh, the I know 80s. which one you're talking about. Okay, yeah. I have that. I stole that. I got the one where uh, Carl's drinking the Thunderbird. Yeah. <laughs> I have that one. I have an old one or uh, Hennigan's only one. Yeah. I have uh, Sean Kent's I stole when he was handsome and he didn't hate everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I got Damon Schrader somewhere. Yeah. Uh, he was just here this weekend. Right. I forgot. That. Man, <laughs> such a great storyteller. Oh, yeah. I guess you don't go uh, hunting with Germans, huh? They already <laughs> lost two world wars. <laughs> 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 oh, it's a long story. Yeah. It's about hunting some elk in Canada. <laughs> yeah, uh, th yeah, those Canadians guys. I fucking hated them when they came down for the competition because they're all ri ringers. Yeah, they were all so good. Yep, I was like, you motherfuckers, you're taking all the spots, dirty immigrants. Fuck well, you me. know what? I went over to uh, my when that video went viral. It went big in India. I got a shit ton of fans in India, and I want to go over there and I want to take a job from a brown guy. <laughs> That's what I want to do. I want to go to India and take a job from a brown guy. Yeah, I I've been I say that shit on stage all the time. I had the I had some militia guys at the show. I just kept calling them militia guys because right. they were fucking murkered out, fucking yeah. eagle on a t shirt, America hat on. Right. Is this like, well, in Tri Cities? Yeah, yeah. I was like, "What's up with the militia? Do you guys take the night off or whatever?" And they just kind of stopped <laughs> laughing. They're like, "Ah." Oh. I was like, "Hey." I was like, "You love this country?" They're like, "Goddamn right." I was like, "Hey, I'm taking a job from a white comedian right now." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and I, I say it with such confidence. They're right. like, is this guy fucking for reals right now? Right. I was like, look, I know you guys got guns on you and shit. I really don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I'll fist fight those bullets right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. It's just funny to me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you get out in these rural areas, but like I, I, I we started in Seattle, uh, you know? So like all those rural areas are what? 40 miles away yeah they're not that no it doesn't take long so i have this thing this line i say when i'm here it's like oh everybody thinks everybody's kumbaya in seattle fucking the men kiss the men the ladies kiss the ladies and right i was like hey, you get outside the city it's fucking kentucky out here yeah so oh, real fast real fast that's my favorite shit when like younger comics in seattle they'll be doing all these outside gigs and <laughs> it's like when comics come up here from la they come to seattle and be like oh fucking mexicans everywhere it's like yeah. not really guy you go 
Yeah. Yeah. LA's crazy. You guys were uh, LA, Hollywood. I was like, no, dude, all your shit's not going to work. No, that's right. That's <laughs> why you got to go to the rural places and get in little towns and find out how I, do I work these rooms. I was in uh, Appleton, Wisconsin, Skyline. And these two dudes had MAGA hats on, like in the front oh, row. Wow! And I was like, I looked at, I was like, I meet, I had, I was like, what's up? I was like, you guys are all in, huh? Drink the yeah. Kool Aid and everything. Look yeah. at you guys. That's yeah. your fashion for the weekend. Yeah. Your wife got all ready and shit. You just like, I'm just gonna throw my Make America Great hat on. It's cool. Oh, that's. I great. look great. Yeah. <laughs> they were loving it. Yeah. <laughs> they were loving making fun of them. I was like, oh, you guys, because they had the red one and the white one. Oh, so they I didn't seen the white one. Oh, dude, I had. That's my, funny. One of my I'm ex-girlfriends. You, I'm glad you busted the balls. <clears throat> oh, dude, it's my favorite shit. It's my. F- <laughs> I told my dad. My dad's all in with King Trump. Is he? Yeah. Holy I, shit. I was like, Pop. He's all it's King Trump. You know. I was like, Pop. You know you're Mexican, right? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so my ex-girlfriend, uh, she was a receptionist at Trump Towers when he announced. Oh yeah. So I, sh- I don't even know. Allegedly. Allegedly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she texted me that day when he was saying all that wild shit about Mexicans. Right. And he go- she goes, are you watching this? I was like, yeah, what's going on over there? She's all, everybody's running around like it's serious. I was like, he's all, how long you give him? I was like, he's saying that wild shit? Maybe a month. Yeah. At minimum. I had this joke in Tacoma before the election. I was like, I was like, oh, what's up with that King Trump guy? I was like, fuck, right. man. I was like, dude. I was like, it was kind of funny at first, but now it's starting to get real. I was like, right. oh, shit. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. At, I I mean, I, I never seen you talk politics or anything like that. No, I stay away from it. It's just toxic. You yeah. used to be able to do jokes. I did Reagan jokes. I did Bush 1 jokes. I did Clinton jokes. I did George W. jokes. But after that, it was like, I it think, just got too toxic. Yeah, I think after 9-11, like, you yeah. couldn't. Remember Boxcar? Boxcar? The boxcar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember him? He mm-hmm. wore the hat? Yep. Okay. So he was very political like right. when I started. So, And that was like right after 9-11, you couldn't say shit right. about anything. You're, they were just like, you hate America. So yeah. Like, no, we don't hate America. What the fuck are you talking about? Nobody hates America. You hate the troops, bro. I was like, no one hates the troops. No, we just hate exactly. why, We just hate why they get sent over there to make rich guys rich. That's exactly. <laughs> I have this line in my act where I'm just like... I'm like, look, all, all America is doing is creating boogeymen. So you, every That's couple, all. They always have to have a boogeyman. Yeah. They have to have an enemy. Have to have a boogeyman. Something to fear. Something to be afraid of. Some old guy said something about Panama. They're like, that's why we got Noriega. I was like, motherfucker, he was an employee of the CIA. Yeah. He had a bunch of dirt on George W. Bush, who right. was the fucking director of the CIA. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, George Bush was like, hey, I can't get to let them tapes get out. I got to no. get this fool. We got to make up some bullshit. <laughs> so they went over and took all his shit. <laughs> That's my favorite. No. Uh, my favorite shit is like create this boogeyman. You got to make money. Yeah, so there's fun. always a boogeyman. There's a boogeyman. All right. So let me see. I think we covered all the things I wanted to cover because last time I was here, I wanted to get Carl back on the podcast. This is Carl Warmerhoven. Mm-hmm. But uh, he didn't want to. All right. The only thing that I wanted to ask you was. Ron, Carl, and, and John Fox. Like You've known these guys since the 80s. Right. And Ron's late wife, Laura, mm-hmm. who was, she ran the comedy competition. Right. She was basically Peter Gray. Right. Okay. So, like, how's your relationship with them still to this day? Like, you guys have an old-timers game, game and play yeah. softball and shit? Oh, yeah. No, I always stay in touch with them. Ron's actually has an agency where, the, you know, that yeah, books. college booking. And he does books cruise comics and oh, comics where? and he's my agent for that oh cool so ron gets me my cruise dates mm-hmm. him and steve smith who's another guy that started comedy here they have the agency together yeah and then uh carl i've known carl i actually saw i told you when i was starting in the tri-cities there was no comedy in the tri-cities yeah but for a while there was a little bar that uh had comedy and so i would go every night and watch it just triple book that um, probably it's probably what it was <laughs> yeah and i saw carl there one time before i ever met him before he ever emceed that night i met i saw carl there and then i met him the first night when i signed up for that open mic and then yeah. chickened out and i've been friends with carl he had a great act when he used to work he had a great act the dreaded triple entendre yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> he was really funny and had a great act but he has a great vocabulary oh he's so he's very funny. well read mm-hmm. so he's just like some of those jokes like very sophisticated on stage yeah too. you know he had an air about him and he, he had that beard 
uh, made him look. He always looked like a professor, mm-hmm. even when he was young. He looked like a professor. Yeah, wore a jacket with you know the the little elbow sleeves on it and stuff. I mean, he looked like a professor. Yeah, yeah. So he had that respect to the audience. He always wore that jacket with the elbow sleeves when he was managing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Fox, I've known because I was in the competition from 1984. So I've known him. It took me a long time. I don't know if I figured him out to this day. I don't know if I've ever figured no. him out. He's just, he, he's running. It. I was like, I, when I would talk to him on sun, that last Sunday, I was like, dude, when are you going to get a fucking existent? You look like shit. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, dude, you're running yourself. I was like, I'm almost 70 years old, doggy. I was like, you can't be doing yeah. all this shit by yourself. Quit being so fucking cheap. No. So I, <laughs> I haven't talked to him or worked for him for quite a while, but we have a, you know, he'll call me or yeah. email me, and I don't bug him. So when he wants something, and I'll see if it works. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, what was I going to say? That motherfucker. That's amazing to me, though, 36 years. That's unbelievable. Doing comedy? That, that I've known all three of those guys you mentioned for yeah. 36 years. That's, uh, I, I, I'm glad Ronnie got out of the managing biz because yeah. of the fact that he was looking, he was, towards the end of it, he was just kind of like, He's like just drinking whiskey on the ship, yeah. just fucking sitting there like Billy, the former owner. Yeah, well, co- Ron always kind of got a sad look on his face yeah. anyway. Even when he's happy, he's got a kind of a droopy look to his face. So, yeah. When I was starting, he was going to Montreal still, mm-hmm. uh, and like he's all, I was like, how'd your pitch meeting go? He's like, I got my cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, fool. I was like, damn. So, yeah, the, uh, Fox, just, I seen Fox and... It just brings it all back to when I started because, like I said, that was, if you got to – people don't realize, like, back in the 80s, if Fox was at the gig, that's a lot of work for you. Yeah, well, he had uh, he had three clubs in the Bay Area at least. Mm-hmm. He had Reno. I worked for him up in Reno at the Riviera several times. Yeah. He probably had seven weeks at one time. Yeah. And he'd give them all to you twice a year. That's 14 weeks right there. Bang, <laughs> bang, twice. Damn. 14 weeks Fuck you can pull that One shit off One phone on. call One phone call Yeah Give them all to you Do this this this, this. Alright you're just writing As fast as he's reading Oh I was I was getting my check from him And whenever Fox is writing checks That's a good thing Oh yeah I loved it Yeah I was like oh, Give me that money fool And then uh, So he's uh, I was like he's, he's all along you here I was like Oh we're gonna leave At the end of May And then I'll be back a couple of weeks In June or whatever And I was like Well I got these Open Nobody's like I don't book out after a month no not anymore <laughs> not no. anymore like, i want to see if this shit's still there yeah <laughs> so all right i want to thank you for taking time out of your day thanks for having me uh i really appreciate it uh if you have any dates you would like to plug for my eight listeners uh you're more than welcome to do that at this time <laughs> well i got one this sunday uh it's a benefit Oh, word. At uh, Shorecrest High School for the track team. Okay. I do it every year. All right. So I'm doing that. Uh, Who else is on the show? Vanessa Dawn. Okay. So she's going to open. And I, this is the first time I've appeared in Seattle since my videos went crazy last June. So I'm hoping some people come out. I know there's some people coming out just to see me. So I'm doing a longer set than I normally do. Okay. That's this Sunday. And then most of the other stuff, I don't know if I have anything in this area for a while. Yeah. It's all out in the road. All right. Mathis Dates. Yeah, Vegas. You know this guy opens for Johnny Mathis. Johnny Mathis. Did you I used to open for? No, you opened for John, Joan Rivers. Yeah, a number of times. Yeah, about twenty times. Fuck, that's wild. That was a good gig. We got to get you back and get you some old show business. All right, on yeah, I thing. got some of those too. Let's yeah, do it. Let's thank you very much, now, Brad. Man. I appreciate right, it. Man. Thank you guys for tuning into the Roger That Podcast. Uh, I am ninety five percent sure that all of this recorded. Um, the other five percent is just fucking Mexican doubt in the back of my head because we're fucking hater ass people, and that's all we do is hate and try to fucking crabs in a bucket, bro. All right, but we want to start to stay positive. All right, do something nice for somebody. All right, you don't have to be a shithead on the internet all day. All right, let's try to uplift each other a little bit, and uh, I'll try not to fist fight anybody and lose. All right, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting old and it's starting to. I turned forty this year and it's starting to. Um, Ugh, my gym workouts are not the same as they used to be. So I'm starting to get a little tired. I think I got to get some fucking TRT and testosterone replacement or some stem cells <laughs> or some blood of poor children. Yeah. <laughs> All of the above. All right. Well, well, thank you for tuning in. Uh, this will be posted this week. And I have a bunch of dates coming up. You should check that out on rogerlizola.com. I will be in Seattle and Washington area for the uh, next month and a half. And then I go to Alaska for two weeks. And then we come back. 
when we go to LA, try to get famous and not uh, suck any people's dick named Harvey Weinstein. All right. <laughs> Thanks for coming out, guys. I appreciate it. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Bye.